What's up guys, Larry Chen here. We are at Circuit of the Americas for Grid Life Round 1. Yeah. Is it Round 1? So. Yep, yep. Grid Life Round 1 GLTC Super Lap Battle in Austin, Texas. This is such a fun event. Actually, my first time shooting this event was last year and it was super cool to see the Time Attack plus GLTC. We got James Halton here with his beautiful TSX GLTC build. I actually asked my buddy Adam Jabay. Adam Jabay, is, he's the race, race director track. for GLTC and I straight up just went to him. I was like, hey, look, it's lunchtime. Nobody's running right now. What is the most unique GLTC car running today? And he's like, it's gotta be the TSX. And now we're looking at it. This is one of my favorite things to feature. I love featuring oddball cars that were never meant to be a race car or fast. This was meant to be just a people mover and it's a four door people mover. Yep. What made you wanna build this into a wheel to wheel race car? It was Adam's fault actually. We were, we were talking about building an Integra. I had sold the uh, Integra Time Attack car that I was probably most known for. And it's going through a big rebuild right now. It'll be back out soon. Uh, and I was looking for an Integra shell. And I told Adam, I'm like, we're coming out for GLTC in 2020. We're really looking forward to it. And I'm just kind of, you know, you know, testing the waters. He's like, I have the car for you. I'm like, really? He's like, I have the car for you. And he links me up with his buddy. And this car was like part of the way through, Nicholas Zabolowski. And uh, he's from Kentucky and he's like, you know, we started chatting back and forth and he started sending me kind of, you know, the, some of the parts that were on the car and stuff like that. And it just started making more and more sense. And I was like, well, I was kind of thinking of an Integra, but you know, this is kind of like a big Integra, you know, in a way it's still a double wishbone car in the front. And you know, we were, we would have done a K swap anyways. This car comes with a K24 from the factory. So the more we looked into it and uh, the more we kind of thought about it, the more we realized this could have a lot of potential. The cage was done already. This was like in the fall and we were planning on coming to this event in 2020, which we did. You know, we didn't mind the fact that the car had a cage in it already because we knew it was going to be a tight timeline to make the event. And uh, yeah, we, we ended up picking up the car uh, in the beginning of December and we debuted it here in February. And it was before, it, it was getting more disassembled before it was getting mis uh, reassembled. The fr basically January 1st, this car was absolutely a bare shell with a cage in it. Repainted the interior and everything happened in about the next four weeks. But how did you do? I think, you, did you win the first we did. race? Yeah, we won three out of the four races that weekend and we won the weekend championship. In something that was never meant to do that. It, yeah. It's the craziest thing. So what makes it so good? So this, this chassis is interesting because all the like, you know, the, the cult Hondas were always a trailing arm in the back and a trailing arm is not, a race car doesn't usually have trailing arm rear suspension. So this has like, Similar to uh, similar multi-link to an S2000 in the back, and then it has you know like traditional um, S2000 Civic Integra double wishbone in the front. So this is you could argue that this might be the best you know suspension geometry wise of anything front wheel uh, anything front wheel drive that Honda ever did. But it's so big. It is big. It, it is, is a long, so long. It is a long car. It is a big car. I mean, c compared to a lot of the GLTC cars, you just have so much more car to deal with when you're doing passing or going through traffic. The interesting thing about this car is, is something I learned as we were kind of sorting it out. You can set this car up extremely loose in the back end. And because it's such a long wheelbase, you have, you know, the, the time from when it snaps loose to when it comes all the way around. You kind of, you bought, you bought yourself some time there. Um, so that, that aspect is very interesting. And it's not the greatest in the tightest of corners, like turn 11, turn 12 on and off the back straight here. Those are more than 90 degree corners. It struggles there a little bit, but in the S's in 16, 17, 18, the car is really, really strong in those, in those high speed corners. You know, it, this, you know what this reminds me of? This kind of reminds me of Will Ayun's yep. car, yep. where that is a car that was never meant to be the fastest time attack car in the world, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's broken so many records yep. and you look at that car, the stock version of it at least, and you think there's no way. Yep. And it's front wheel drive. Yep. Um, but this, you're racing against rear wheel drive, you're racing against cars that weigh way less. Yep. Maybe up to 500 pounds less. Yep, right? definitely, definitely. Our minimum weight for this weekend is 29.58. 
and that's after a race. So, you know, fuel burn off and stuff like that. We go out on a track at about 3,005 pounds. So how much does Eric's EG weigh? 24 and change, <laughs> right. but I will say, you know, the S2000s are, uh, the ASM S2000s, they're 27 and change. And most of the Corvettes are around 3,000 pounds. So this year, it'll be interesting to see when Eric gets his EG, you know, the new EG build back out because there's a lot of heavy cars that are doing quite well right now. So, so let's talk about the advantage to having a big car. Um, let's take a look at the motor. So in, in a lot of racing series, while it would be ex extreme disadvantage to have such a big heavy car, you actually can put down more power because of that, right? Yes, because of the power, the fact that the series is power to weight based, you know, we have one of the higher numbers of horsepower than, than most of the field does. And, uh, you know, we get a small bonus for being front wheel drive. Uh, we don't take any penalties for splitter or wing. We choose, when, when we, design, you know, kind of thought this car out, our plan was to build it to be as fast as possible in a straight line and you know not take any penalties for any aerodynamics or anything like that and uh, it's worked well so far and i think that the the car races very well even if it's not always the fastest in qualifying uh, it races very well because of how fast it is in a straight line hmm. so with this setup how much power is this putting down uh, so our for this weekend we are 230 wheel horsepower we detune a lot of the cars in gltc now are you know making more power and detuning it so they can flatten the power band uh, this motor has made 291 wheel, but we have it detuned down to, to 230 right now. And you actually don't run a front splitter. You don't no. need the so, arrow. So you pay a 3% penalty for a front splitter. God. So whether 3% more weight or 3% less power. And that's, you know, that's kind of our thought. A rear wing is 3%, a front splitter is 3%. I choose to take nothing. Mm. I want to make this car absolutely as fast as a straight line. 6% of 230 horsepower is a significant amount of power, right? Uh, we would rather take less and be a little faster in a straight line. And, you know, we didn't qualify on pole last time we were here either, and we still managed to win three out of four races. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, see if we can do that yeah, again. Yeah, because that's the strategy. It's like, well, do you get on pole and then have the have to defend your position the yep. whole time, or you work your way through? But then again, when you're working your way through, you only have just a small amount of time to do so. Correct, correct. But I, I always think it's easier to pass someone in a straight line than it is to pass someone in a corner. Um, so... You know, if you can if you can have a very good car in the corners, but be very quick in the straight line, uh, I think that that that's our recipe, anyways. It may it might not be the right recipe, but it's our recipe. So then, uh, what transmission is this? Uh, that is a so the TSXs were interesting. The TSXs came with a magnesium transmission case, and they were uh, about 10 pounds lighter than all of the other K series transmission cases. But the cars are getting old now. The magnesium fatigues and you tend to have more transmission failures because the insides of the case actually wear away. So that's actually an Accord case with our own recipe of guts inside and uh, using a 3J diff from Momentum Motorsports. Okay, so an Accord that was manual? Yes. Huh. Yes. So the, the TSX, the Accord, and the TL of this generation were all like same chassis, same pickup points, same everything. And so... The, the most stuff shared is between an 03 and 07 Accord and an 04 and 08 TSX. Those two chassis were almost exactly the same. Yeah, because I've never seen a, one of those manual. They actually yep. came in manual. Yep, wow. yep. 03 okay. to 07 Accords, were, there, was, there was a manual option. Hmm. So we've, we've added a few things back in now. We have some ballast in here. The, the, the rules have changed a little bit since the, when we debuted this car. So we've added things like windshield wipers and headlights and stuff like that because we're running the car at that 2958 minimum weight now. When we came here in 2020, the rules were a little bit different. We ran this car at 27.55 with me in it, and I'm not light. So we had to really work to be at that 27.55 two years ago. These cars started out life at 3,250 pounds with no driver. And before we came here in 2020, this car with no fuel in it and no driver, but everything else ready to go was 2,500 pounds even. We had 750 pounds we got out of this car. That's incredible. Yeah, it was, It was. you know, there was, there was no extra, <laughs> extra anything, right? There was no windshield wipers, no headlights. You know, everything was absolutely as, as light as it could be. Unit 2 Fab did, you know, did the, the, the whole build on the car. They fabbed the titanium exhaust for it. They, they really went through the car and said, we've got to get this car absolutely as light as possible. And it's kind of funny now that we're slowly adding things back in, because if you're, if you've got, you know, right there, we've got 100 pounds of ballast in it anyways. If you've got 100 pounds of ballast in it, you might as well have windshield wipers. You might as well have headlights. What's the point in having no headlights if you've got so much lead in the car, right? Right. And, I mean, you even went as far as to remove the dash. Um, you're running a lithium-ion anti-gravity battery. Yep. Which pretty much weighs nothing already. Yep. 
Um, but this is uh, th this kind of reminds me also of uh, the Civic Type R, the Spoon Civic yeah. Type R, and also the Accord, you know, Euro R. Yep. You have so much room here. It's so big. Like, we you, brought, we, you know, we the trailer was pretty full when we were coming here. We brought a lot of spares and stuff like that. And I went to pack the trailer, and I, uh, at the last minute, I realized I've got to put my, you know, my empty fuel jug somewhere. So we put like five fuel jugs in the back. It you is. Know, in the in the actual trunk area, there was five tw uh, five gallon fuel jugs back there, and it was like probably could have put fifteen fuel jugs in this car. I mean, it's it's some serious distance. So like when you're actually driving this, when you're actually racing it wheel to wheel, I'm, I'm sure the awareness of where you are in time space versus a lot of the other cars. It's something you probably have to think about. For more. sure. I mean, I, even though, you know, we weren't, we haven't been able to come for the last two years because of COVID restrictions and the border and everything like that. I've still done a lot of racing and competing with it in Canada during this time. So I have a lot of time in this car in the last two years, even though we've, you know, it's only our second GLTC event and I've gotten pretty comfortable with the, the size of it and everything like that. Just get used to it the same as anything else. This shifter is so nice. Yep, I love that's, that's it so much. That's our K-Tune shifter. We've used K-Tune products for years. They've been title sponsor of, of you know, everything that I've raced since, uh, I guess it's about 2013 now. So it's, it's a long time. We have a great relationship with K-Tune. You know, we're using their shocks and their shifter and, you know, their wiring harness and, you know, throttle body. The list goes on and on and on and on with, with the parts that we use from them. All their AN fittings and it's, uh, it's a great relationship and I feel really lucky that they've supported us for so long. And you're running a Haltech Elite 1500. Yep, yep. And we, we, we love those. We love that ECU. Those guys have been a huge help to us. Excuse the wiring here. We, this, this is a rendition of the wiring from the Integra build. And uh, there was a lot of extras on that car, traction control, wheel speed sensors, everything like that. And uh, the actual plan is after this event, we're going to go through and, uh, and build a uh, you know, much more minimalist harness just so we can kind of simplify things a little bit there. It was, it was a rush to build this car and then we've been you know, trying to do so many improvements over the last two years on it. Now we're getting it pretty close to the way we want it and it's like now we're going to go back and tidy up some things. Well, no, I know, I'm sure just looking at the rest of the car, I know it's going to be really well sorted. Do the rear doors open? They do. Huh. I'm sure it's just a lot easier to work on it, too. Oh, it's so nice to be able to just get in the back. The trunk yeah. is not on hinges. The trunk is just on quick latches. But uh... I, I do have to say, I love the look of the vehicle. It looks right. You know, it looks like one of those. I think that, you know, everyone says it kind cars. of looks like a mini NASCAR or something like that with the with the air dam in the front and, and the spoiler in the back. And, uh, you know, it wasn't even really like our goal, but it just kind of the rules dictated. You know, we wanted to do as much as we could without taking any of those penalty points that we were talking about. That's a really good point. So that doesn't take a penalty point. OK, that's free. If we wanted to run a normal wing, we would take three percent penalty uh, under 250 square inches is free. So this is just under five tall by about 50 inches wide. So it's just under the 250 square inches that you're allowed. And we make enough rear downforce that we can get it done like that. And again, you know, want to be as fast as we can in a straight line. Hmm. Is there any glass on this anymore? Just the windshield. Okay. Yep. Huh. I hate Lexan on windshield. It's just like no matter what coatings you put on it or anything like that, it's just a scratch fest always. Yeah. You know, the, the, the backs are whatever, but it's nice to be able to have a nice clean piece of glass to see out the... Yeah, it's a lot more important to yeah. be able to see the track. One thing that's kind of frustrating now is on a TSX, it's really hard to get, um, you know, some... There's not a lot of love for these cars, right? So little things like, you know, window trim and stuff like that. It's getting hard to get now. Roof trim, all that stuff is getting hard to get now. But again, minimalist, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that much anyways. Yeah, out of all of the cars that I featured today, I pretty much honestly every one of the cars, maybe minus the Civic Type R, were cars that were never meant to be fast and are maybe unloved when they first came out, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't think people thought much about a TSX for, for quite a few years. Now that they're getting a little bit older and a little bit cheaper, I think people are paying notice to them. But, you know, people message me all the time, you know, even sometimes guys with a TSX will say, you know, what do you think for it, for a, for a track car or whatever? And I say, honestly, you know, for, a, for a, like a dual duty car, it's not the best choice because again, it's 3,250 pounds. And if you still want to drive it on the street and you still want to have a dash and glass and uncut doors in it, it's going to be a really heavy car. Like this car, you know, an, an eighth gen Civic Si is getting to be a very common car to track now. Those cars are 500 pounds lighter than these out of the box. So yes, I do think the suspension geometry is a little bit better on these. But also, 
you know, I'm not going to pay 500 pounds for better suspension geometry. In this situation, it's a little bit different because you know it's a power to weight based series. The weight doesn't matter quite as much. But if it was just for a fun lapping car, it might not be the right choice for a lot of people. Mm. Can we talk about the brakes? Of course. Wheel and tire we've we've used StopTech forever. They're fantastic. We use G-Lock brake pads. Again, fantastic. No issues there ever. We don't run any brake ducts or anything like that. We've never had the need. We don't really get any fade. And again, we're trying to be as low drag as we can get. We use Koenig wheels again forever. We've never had a problem. We love them and we will continue to run them as long as we are competing. Hmm. And then, uh, so like it's stock control arms and stuff? Uh, stock control arms, uh, K-tuned upper arm, stock lower, some cool stuff uh, that we did with uh, Unit 2 Fabrication and StimTech to get the geometry where we wanted it because again, not a lot of roll center correction parts and stuff like that available for this. So we made our own because we wanted to get the, the ride height down a lot. This car is lowered um, about four inches over stock. So when you're going that low, you can't, you know, it's, it's hard to run off the shelf stuff, but you know, I think we got it working very good. Well, thank you so much for showing me this build. I love JLTC so much because one of my favorite things about this race series is you can actually relate to the cars. It's all different cars and it's not the same type of car winning every yeah. single time. Yeah. And it's all different platforms too. Time, time Attack, uh, you know, Time Attack is where I got my start. I love it so much. But in the, you know, we ran Unlimited, we ran against Will for a long time. And it just, it gets to the point where, you know, there might be one or two or three cars, depending on an event that could, you know, that could compete. And you come out to GLTC this weekend and it's like, I think eight cars broke the track record from last year. Like, come on, you know, any of those cars in the top 10 can win a race this weekend. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, you know, you get a lot of the flair that people got, you know, from Time Attack, you know, it's very much a builder's class, but what? it's kind of kept in check enough that it's, it doesn't get crazy. And I think that the craziness in Time Attack sometimes makes it a little bit, like you say, a more difficult to relate. What other race series can you race a TSX against a Miata, a 2000, Corvettes, BMWs? Cayman. Like, Cayman, on yeah. and on and on. I don't even know what else. There's a, whatever, Honda Fit, this, that, and the other. Anything you can think of, a 370Z, Yeah, right? I mean, I think that that's the cool thing that Gridlife have really pushed to make the rule book make sense enough that you could bring pretty much anything you want out here. And, you know, maybe not every car can win, but every car can be competitive. And, you know, that's, that's inspiring for me. You look at, you know, I don't know what's going on when I'm out there in qualifying. You come back and look at the qualifying sheet and you're like, what the heck is going on here? It's such an assortment. And I think that's, that makes it really fun. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.